Hi, this is Rob, Longevity Learning Lab. Still working on that motorized turntable that I was uh, working on. And, but I brought it home and I was thinking about something, so we're gonna revise this a little bit. So we're gonna get rid of some stuff, make it a little easier, a little more sturdy for me. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of that turntable action. I didn't like that. I didn't like the way the bearing was floppy on me. And I got a better, better idea going on. So we're still gonna use the rim, okay? We're still gonna use that rim, but we're gonna go a little different. With my motor, is gonna be flip-flopped. So we've got like my tubing here. Okay, here's my tubing. And the motor was gonna go here on the channel, all right? That's the motor with the sprocket, okay? Then the other, turntables right here with the other sprocket. Well, I didn't like that because it was getting too floppy. I was trying to do it without a bushing, without a bearing. Eh, uh -uh, didn't work out. I've got something better and I'll show you. What we're gonna do is, I got a bearing from a quad runner, okay? And uh, with a better sprocket. So that's gonna go on my tubing. Okay, here's the tube and here's that channel where the motor was, okay? Well now this is where that bearing and sprocket's gonna be, right there. And then my, my rim and turntable is gonna be up here. Now here is where the motor's gonna be, and then the sprocket's gonna come up this way, so it's a little bit more linear, and a little bit more fundamentally sound, it, it, no shake and stuff like that. The foot pedal is gone. I got a handheld um, potentiometer control box. We're going to use that instead. So that's pretty much what we're going to change up. And I can do that really fast. Let me show you what we're going to do. Now this is what I'm going to do here. I've got my motor. I've got my gear. Now I originally wanted to have the gear going underneath, but we're not going to do that. And you can see where I used to have the motor here, now it's going to be over here. So I really don't have to do too much to this side of it. I just got to drill some holes, anchor it into the, the, the tube. So we're good with that. That will always be a, a, center, a set spot. That's not going to adjust. Now with uh, the bearing I've got from the, the quad runner, a lot better. It's even got a little break on it if I want to use it. So what I'm going to do with the channel, I'm going to go ahead and cut a hole here, set this in there, and then I've got a plate that I'm going to go ahead and tack on so it's, it's, it's anchored here. But it's not really going to be anchored onto the channel. I'm going to make it big enough so I can move it and have a slot. So that's where I'm going to have my chain adjustment. That's why these slots right here I'm going to keep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the, the bracket for this that will hold it on to my other piece, which I got right here. And then that's what's going to slide, that piece of bar. And then with the sprocket, I took the old bicycle sprocket and I cut it off because the, the ratio for the teeth is what I wanted to keep. Plus I got the bicycle chain. The quad didn't have the chain for it, so I couldn't use that, but I still got that sprocket. So I just welded that on and made sure it was nice and, nice and flat. And then that'll go on here. And then the hub for the rim, I'm gonna go ahead and make another little, little uh, bracket for that and that'll go on top of that, and then it'll be all nice and tight. I won't get any rockage, and that's, that's the thing that I was really kind of apprehensive about with that other way I had it with just that rod. It was up too high. I didn't like it. So let me go ahead and cut this, and then, uh, oh yeah, then I've got this rewired up, and I've got the potentiometer box, and I go get that, and I'll show you how that's going to hook up. Yeah, okay, so here's this. Here's the potentiometer box. I just got this. So I'm, I was into this project for a little over 10 bucks, but now I'm into it a little bit more than that, but that's okay. So that'll just plug in here to the main power, and then my motor will plug in to this right here into the box. Make sure it's turned off, okay? Just like that. So when I want to go ahead and get it going, just turn it up, and I turn it down. Just like that. And that'll work, so I know we're good, good to go on that. So I can unplug that and I get my plasma and I'll anchor this up. And finally, we're getting it done. 
Okay, now here's the plan what we're gonna do here. We got our, our uh, bearing, our little hub here, and underneath it, there was the bracket that came off. Well, I had to cut it off because that's why I was able to get it because it was in a wreck. So what I'm gonna do is take some of this flat stock here. We're gonna weld it on like this. So I've already got the existing slots, right? So this will go in here and I'll weld that onto there and it'll be able to slide. So I'll be cutting that hole for the bottom of this to just to drop through, okay? But since I'm cutting that hole there, I gotta strengthen up that channel. So I've got some other little bar here and I'm just gonna put it up underneath there and run a bead and then that'll give it some more strength. It's kind of like a gusset and that just, that way it doesn't just bow. And so let me cut this up, get my plasma. And we'll get, make a cut. Yeah, that'll work. And I'll clean that up. That'll be all right. Okay. There, that finally stopped. Now I have to watch out because this slot here is off a little bit. So I can disregard that right now. I might even just fill that in put some copper underneath there, it'll be okay. And then that'll fit like that. Then if I gotta open up the hole a little bit, which it looks like I have to, open up this hole a little bit here. That'll still give me enough slot. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, let me clean that up. Okay, now I've got my hole cut. I got my little bars for here cut. And then I got my tabs that are gonna be welded up on underneath here. See, I'm glad I'm not, I'm not getting too close to that bearing right there. So I just gotta be careful on that and keep that cool. But that'll, that'll slide back and forth and that's enough to give me room for that, for the linkage on the, the chain. So let me go ahead and tack this up right quick. And this is just a stiffener. This is nothing really too extreme. Uh, helps so I get put on some gas. There we go.
and that'll go like that. Then my plates will come up like that. I'm gonna weld that up off camera here. Let me see. Oh, that'll be okay. Just like that. Get that to hold it for now. The other one will come right here. Yeah, I think that's going to work out pretty good. Yeah, that'll, that's, that'll work good for me. Pack this a little bit more. Yeah, just enough. Okay, let me finish welding this up and pop some holes. Okay, now I've got pretty much my sprocket ready to go. Then I've got my motor mount done. And if you can see, I've got my little hub done too. What I did, so now it's gonna be able to slide back and forth here for my, my chain tension. What I did over here is I welded a little nut on the plate for the hub and then I put my little set screw in there, but that set screw goes right through this nut. And it's that way it's easier for it to slide and it'll just go right on in here. And as you tighten it up, it draws the chain back. So we'll go ahead, we know that's good. So then the chain assembly and the sprockets will go on here. And then we know the chain's gonna fit. So now what are we going to do about our main hub for the turntable? I'm thinking, well, this is cast, so I can't really weld on that. So what I did, I made a little holder for it that will slip in over that, and the nut will tighten first, and then I put divots on here and set screws. So it'll fit right on in there, and you can dial it in as you need to keep it nice and flat. That way I don't have to I could tack it onto that sprocket, but what's the point? Because what if I say I want to have it go slower, I want to change out the sprocket. So this way here, it'll keep it nice and tight on that. And the main thing is you want it centered. You don't want it to rock and tip on you and stuff like that. So we'll put that on later. So we'll get this bolted up. It's a typical thing, just like I just got them 3 8 16 bolts here. And then my sprocket set. I'm plugged in here with my speed control. Let me get it bolted up. We'll see how this puppy works. And uh, then we're getting ready for the turntable. And that's it. We'll go ahead and I'll get this running and I'll show you how it runs. Okay, I got my sprocket on here. I got my chain on here. Everything's nice and tight. Not too much tension here. And uh, actually it is a little, a little wobbly here, but that's okay because that's if this old chain, it maybe it does have a little twist to it or something, you know. And uh, Let's try this out. Everything out of the way, everybody step back. Here comes trouble. Okay, on variable speed. Here we go. Oh, baby. A little slower, a little faster, a little slower. Hey, all right, I'll let that run for a little while, make sure nothing falls apart on me. It's not perfect, but what the heck, be good for my garage. Okay, let's get onto the turntable. Like I was saying, I got this little piece here, and this is going to go in here, and this will keep it nice and tight. And then we'll put it over top of here, and actually this nut will come off, and then I'll put the cotter pin in there after. And that'll go on there, and that'll keep that secure. Okay, now we got this done. Cool. Now we're going to go to our table. Okay, now the table, I'm still going to use that same, same rim with the crossbars. It's going to go on the hub. 
just like that and like that okay but I'm going to turn turn this around a little bit huh. get it turn it around turn table I got this piece of stainless steel here for the top what I'm going to do I'm going to find the center and then cut some slots with the plasma and these are going to be my hold downs that way you can adjust them as you want four of them to hold down that flange or whatever pipe you know you want plate or whatever and uh, so we're going to do that on the next episode and uh, we're getting there I'm Rob thanks for joining me on Longevity Learning Lab and we'll see you next time for the finish hopefully see ya